continuing our study on the Lord's Navy. As Christians, we are called in an armament. We are given armor to wear, and a sword, and a shield, and you would picture a uh, armored knight on duty. And you see many of those fights between men with swords and other hand weapons. But there's also a navy. As you see, this is four parts so far. And coming to the conclusion, there are ships of the Lord. And we looked at worship. We looked at fellowship. Workmanship. Stewardship. Now, we're going to look at it. Friendship, which is only two times in the Bible, and they're both one. When you talk about friendship, I've been saved since 1987. I try to be an active Christian. I read and study my Bible, and I've got more butt wounds. Now, I got more swords in my back from Christians. Now, I've had Christians say, Oh, you know, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to help you out. And, you know, turn around and there I am. I'm turning around and there they go. I've been in a few churches and they don't have anything to do with us. We've been in churches where they don't have anything to do with us. They rather fight us. When you want to serve the Lord, friendship is hard. At the end of Jesus' life, he had still 12 disciples, a group of women. But at the cross of Jesus, he had one disciple, John. Mary, his mother, and a few other women. Thirty-three and a half years. Proverbs twenty-two twenty-four says, "Make no friendship with an angry man, and with a furious man thou shalt not go." Don't get involved with someone's angry. I start hearing these people, you know, they're against President Biden and Donald Trump, and you know, I get away from them. I get some of these people, you know, the Illuminati, and, you know, the, I'm not going to fight that fight. You want to fight it, you fight it. And you'll find Christians who are angry at the pastor, at the church, at the Bible. Thank God, don't get involved. Because anger splits. You will learn how to be angry. An angry parent will teach their children unknowingly how to be angry. Now the Bible says be angry and sin not. Well, that's not what we're talking about here. This is a guy that needs anger management several times over. This is a guy who will get pushy. He'll start getting cussing. This is a guy who will make a scene in the line at the grocery store. Don't make no friends. Now, James 4, 4 is an interesting thing. James 4, 4, ye adulterers <laughs> and adulteresses. Wow, what a way to speak to people. What would James say?
like Jesus, he called them out. That woman at the well, he told us, listen, how many husbands do you have? Oh, how many husbands? Oh, no, 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 wait a minute. Was it four or five? You call them out. You rebuke them. Ye adulterers and adulterers, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whoso will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. Does the world like you? You anger God. You're not you, you're not in fellowship with God. We were in church one time and they had a plaque on the wall that they was given to them by the city. How great this church is, how loving care. That's not a Christian. Every apostle except John suffered a violent death and John was put into a, li li a molten liquid and cast onto the island of Platmos. Fox's Book of Mothers is filled with women and men and children who burned on faggots who were crucified and drowned, tortured, in the Inquisition of the Catholic Church. You can't even picture the modes and the means of how they tortured our brothers and sisters in the Lord. And I had to see in church ages, we got rights, we want to be friendly. All are welcome that angers God. I bet you today in your average Baptist church, I bet there are more unsaved people in that church than there are saved. I bet some Baptist churches, if the rapture would happen on a Sunday morning, I bet you that church would be undis undisturbed. And so they go out in their cars and get out in the highways and head for the restaurant and realize people are gone. You know what could be a worse thing for a pastor? He remains after the rapture. That's a failure. You don't have to be friends with the world. You work with them, you deal with them, you get along. You tell them about Jesus. There's that fellowship with Christians. Well, you know, that's the last thing that's going to happen. And when you, today you get Christians that get together, it's a worldly thing. It's nothing biblical. It's carnal. We are in the modes of the Corinthian church. There was a church here in Daytona Beach. It's gone now, but they actually called themselves the Corinthian Church, and I had to laugh. To put a thing up like that, you don't know what the Bible says. So those two really, the only two places, friendship. When that angry man comes up, Push them off. When the world comes up in their tug, push them off. Now the next one, Mark, chapter 10, verse 42. Mark 10, 42. But Jesus called them to him and said to him, You know not they which are accounted, let me try it again, ye know that they which are accounted to rule over the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and their great ones exercise authority upon them. Okay, one more place, Luke. This shows up twice, only Luke 22, 25. 
And he, Jesus, said unto them, The kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them. They that exercise authority upon them are called benefactors. For ye shall not be so. So, the lordship is a lordship. And there are three classes of people in the Bible. There's Jews. They're unsaved. There's Christians who are Jews and Gentiles. And then there are Gentiles and they're unsaved. And Jesus says that this lordship is the rulership over the people, the Gentiles. They're kings and queens and presidents, prime ministers. Whatever the title the Gentiles exercise over a group or nation or population of people. President Biden right now is lordship over the United States of America. King Charles is lordship over the England Empire. We're not to have that lordship in the church. Your pastor is not to get up there and demand for you. I forget if it's the Mormons, or the Jehovah Witnesses, or both. I forget which one. But you must bring your tax paperwork. And you must tithe according to your taxes. Must. That's not a cheerful giving. You know, churches, you know, they, they, they run the Malachi and all that, you know, they, they, we're going we're to contribute, we're going to have, you know, giving, offering, thing and all that, and it's nonsense. The church, the Christians, are to practice free will. I had an episode in my time, and somebody wanted to play drums in the church, and I stood up, and I stood against the pastor in that prayer, I said, that's not holy. The means and the mode of the drums is, is not right for the church. And I give the illustrations, and I, I gave my evidence and it was passed over. And I didn't force the pastor, and I didn't force him. So, okay, you're going to do what you're going to do. And when you get to heaven, you find out you're wrong, you were warned. If you're out in the ship and you see this lighthouse, and this lighthouse gets on the radio and says, Hey, listen, buddy, to the starboard, to the port. Don't keep coming straight because you're, you're right in front of me. Well, that, that boat can keep going straight and crash. A Christian can come back Sunday night if your church has Sunday night services and midweek. They can read the Bible if they want to, but don't force them. Don't get up there in that, that pulpit or that podium as a Sunday school teacher or as a pastor of church and exercise authority over the people. That's almost like Nicolaeus. I'm the pastor, that's why. That's ridiculous. Okay, Genesis 40, next one. Genesis 40, verse 21. And he restored the chief butler unto his butlership. This is the only place again. And he gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand. Now that butler had a job. That 
Matt Butler, verse 10, same chapter, and in the vine there were three branches, and it was as though it budded, and her blossoms shot forth, and the clusters that I brought were bright grapes. The Pharaoh's cup was in my hand. I took the grapes and pressed them in the Pharaoh's cup and gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand. So here's a man working with the king. And the reason why he is pressing grapes into the cup to make new one, to make sure the king's not been poisoned, that's not intoxicating liquor. That's a new one. His job is to fill that cup with fresh wine. Somebody at the Lord's Supper is not recorded had a butlership. We don't know who. But that cup that Jesus said, Here, take this cup. This is the blood of the New Testament. Somebody filled it with new wine. When Jesus turned the water and wine, the butlers, the servants, were filling everybody's cup and they were drinking and they said, man, this stuff is better than the old stuff. That's a type of the Holy Spirit. Because we have to ask God through the Holy Spirit, can our cups be filled for his usage? Will it be preaching a message, teaching a message, witnessing to somebody, studying our Bible, that the Holy Spirit mothership fill our cups of the new wine. Proverbs 11. Last one. Proverbs 11, 15. He that shirt or stranger shall smart for it. Somebody comes up to you. Hey, I'm going to buy a car. Well, oh, good, okay. Can you call sign for it? Oh, yeah, sure. I'm going to buy a house and get a mortgage. Who are you? I'm Fred. I'm the new guy. Okay, I'll sign. Them. I'll sign. Whatever it is. You don't know who the person is and you sign your name. You have a responsibility. He that hated surety shit is sure. Surety shit is it's a pledging on a handshake that you are going to be the co whoever on a loan. My daughter got a new car, not new, new to her. I didn't sign no paperwork. One person asked me one time, they wanted me to sign paperwork for bail to somebody. Man, they were crying. They were begging. They were, act they were on the ground acting like a baby, having a tamper tantrum. For me to sign. He said, What happened? My wife and I got in the car and we drove up, left her. Are you sorry? No. I got no problem with my bills. I don't need to burn in someone else's. They're your son, they're your daughter. Okay, but you know, they're also human. They're also sinners. 
Oh, they're not a stranger. You know everything about your children? There are things I learned about my son I should not have learned, but I learned. And See, when you talk about the Lord's name, you want to stay afloat. There's only one ship or boat that in the in the navy of the world that sinks. That's a submarine. Any other ship that sinks. Pretty much, they're done for. I mean, you got the, the Arizona Memor Memorial in uh, the Pearl Harbor. You, you, you can't use that ship no more. And the submarine's got its use. I've built submarines for many years. Four or five nuclear submarines I took part in building. That's the only one that's allowed to sink. You gotta stay afloat. And in your ship, you gotta make sure you got the right crew. Don't have friendship with the world. Don't have your enemy in the boat. Don't have your enemy at the stern or the helm or the engine room. Make sure you don't your ship don't have too many of your enemy where they can mutiny and win. The worship is to God and God alone. Don't worship the ship. Or the uniform. But God. The fellowship. Togetherness. But watching your fellowship in room. Workmanship. If God wants to put light bolts on you. Allow them to put work light bulbs on you. They didn't put light bulbs on the Titanic. If God wants to put this missile on you, then do it. He wants to put a bigger engine, do it. Let him do it. He wants to give you a new paint job, let him do it. He wants you to come into port and go in the dry dock and, and get over home, go do it. Stewardship. What God has given you, make sure you give it back to Him and more. Double your talents to earn rewards. Do not hide your talents in the dirt or in the earth like a pirate would do with his treasure. Lordship. You know, set rules, set boundaries, set Rules and regulations. But let them do freely. And I know there are things in the Navy where, you know, they're going to stand to attention. They're going to sleep. They have to. Well, there are things that Christians have to do. To be right. But there are other things out there. Like this church membership. That's not Bible. 
Once you put your faith in Jesus Christ, you are a member of the church. What gives that church the right? We're gonna, we're gonna, amen you in. No, no, no. The blood got me in. And nothing but the blood. You got a good 10%, you know. Bible says I can give what I want. As long as I do, do it cheerfully. Without grudging. Butler shit. Whatever you put in your cup for Jesus, make sure it's pure and fresh. And don't be ashamed to ask the Holy Spirit to fill your cup. Sometimes your butler shit with that cup is going to be unnamed and unmentioned. Till we get to the judgment seat of Christ. Surety should. Don't go about pledging. Don't go about I will do it. Because God will hold you to it. 